Hello, I'm so sorry for the interruption. I'm working by myself. I had to put another battery into the camera. If, I'm going back to where I left off. If you are coming out onto the street in Manhattan, 12 days, 15 days before Christmas, and you have a bag filled with $60,000 in cash, the defense is saying you are not carrying that bag like he was carrying that bag, going out into a busy street. Now this is 6, 6.30 at night on a busy street in Manhattan. They're saying you would have that bag over your shoulder to secure it, to make sure nobody took that bag. And right there I said, you know what? All the women that are on that jury, they're really, you know, hearing this part because most women, they, they carry a bag like this. I know my mom carries a bag like this. So they were saying that that proves that there was not $60,000 in the bag, that it was cigars like Seabrook had told everybody it was. And of course, they said he found it in his house because they said that um, it was a man's purse, a man purse. And, you know, Seabrook wasn't going to wear it out in the street. So therefore, it was in his house. What, was, what else was he supposed to do with it when someone gives you a gift um, of, a, of a bag like that? OK, now let's get back to this formula. Like I was saying before, right? This formula that Jonah Resnick had come up with, 20 million, be quick about it, 20 million, if it was gaining 50%, the profits would be 10 million, 20% of 10 million is 2 million, this is the 20, this is the 2 and 20 deal, 2 and 20, 2 and 20, it would be 2 million, 10% of 2 million is 200,000. The reason why, this is now, this is the defense talking. The reason why Jonah had came up with this 100,000 number instead of the actual 200,000 number is because the $100,000 is the money that he was supposed to receive for bringing Seabrook to the hedge fund. Because if you remember, and I'm not sure whether or not I talked about this, but after the delivery of the $60,000, now the, 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 the defense brought out the fact that Seabrooks, if you believe Jonah Resnick, Seabrooks was supposed to receive $100,000, right? That was the whole deal, $100,000 for 20, for 20 million every year. So why would C. Brooks accept 60,000? And he, they, they asked him that. They said, you know, wasn't C. Brooks upset when you give him 60,000? They said, yeah, but the reason why I gave him 60000 is because the um, hedge fund did not do as well as we thought. Murray Huberfeld came up with another formula. He said that Seabrooks would receive a half a percent of his investment going forward. So he would get the 60000 this year because the investment wasn't doing that well. But he would receive, and it, 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 they were going to set it up sort of like an annuity. He was going to receive mo uh, monthly payments that would equal one, a half a percent of twenty million, which equals a hundred thousand. So a half a percent of twenty million would have netted twenty. Would have let it let it netted a hundred thousand a year for Seabrook, getting probably about eight thousand dollars a month. So that was the new deal that Jonah allegedly told Seabrook when he gave him 
the um, bag with 60,000. Like Seabrook was upset, so he told him we came up with a new formula that you won't even have to wait to the end of the year like you did this year, you know, because this is December. You don't have to wait to the end of the year this year. This is what Jonah told him. You're gonna be, you're gonna receive payments starting in January 2015 of about $8,000 a month, and it will equal $100,000 for your $20,000 investment. $20 million investment will kick off $100,000 at a half a percent, okay? What the defense is saying is that that half a percent, that half a percent was Jonah's cut for bringing in Seabrook with the $20 million. That was his commission, right? He was gonna receive $100,000 from Huberfeld because he bought in Norman Seabrook and Norman Seabrook invested $20 million. Norman wasn't in on this. And this is not illegal. Huberfell is supposed to pay his people a commission when they bring in money. They, that, so if he's treating Jonah as an employee or someone who's bringing money to the firm or to the hedge fund, he owes Jonah $100,000. That's where the $100,000 number came from. It was half a percent of the 20 million that Seabrook invested. Seabrook didn't get any of this. So why 60,000? That's the question. Why are we talking about $60,000? Now, you gotta think about this. Like I said, her Uber felt went from zero to $100 million. This guy's worth $100 million. The defense is saying if Huberfell wanted to pay Seabrook $100,000, it would have been no big deal. What is this whole $60,000 in the bag um, shorten Seabrook's $40,000 and all this? What is this about? Why did this happen? Okay, this is the explanation of what happened. Huber felt, Huber felt was gonna give Resnick 100K, right? $100,000. Resnick, being that he is a scam artist and doesn't pay taxes and doesn't have a broker's license, he didn't want the money in cash. He didn't want $100,000 sent to him as revenue, you know, as salary or whatever you want to call it. Because he would have had to pay, he had to pay taxes on the 100000 that he got from Hooverville for this transaction, his commission. He told Hooverville, no, I'm going to send you an invoice for $60,000 and, and make it out for the Knicks tickets. So he sent him the invoice for the $60,000 for the Knicks tickets, even though Hooper felt he didn't have any use for Knicks tickets. You know, he's a businessman. There's other people in the firm that handle those types of things. He's like, yo, you want to get paid? How you want it? You want it in, um, you know, cash? You want a check? He's like, no, send it to me. I'm going to send you an invoice for $60,000. You send it to me as payment for these, these um, tickets. He said, okay, fine. Now you ask, okay, so what happened to the other 40,000 that he owed, that um, Hooper Fell owed Red, Red, Resnick? The defense is saying that Hooper Fell also sent an $18,000 check to Resnick's school, the school that his son went to. He sent an $18,000 check donation, okay? Now, this wouldn't show up on Resnick's account as income. This wouldn't show up as income, so he wouldn't have to pay that. Now we're 18. He said 18 in the Hebrew alphabet means it, it's, it's, it's the letter high. High is, it means life. It has some significance in um, Jewish tradition. So that 18,000, the 18, the number 18 is very significant. 
So he sent the $18,000 check to Resnick's son's school. He sent another, as per Resnick's instructions, he sent another $18,000 check, check to um, another charity, a cancer fund. Cancer fund. That um, one of Resnick's friends, wife was involved in. So Huberfeld did the transaction for sixty thousand dollars for the Knicks tickets. Gave eighteen thousand dollars to Resnick's son's school, probably for his son's um, tuition. Then he gave another eighteen thousand to his um, friends, Resnick's friends' cancer fund, and he gave. 1600 1600 to another charity that Resnick told him to send it to. So, in total, you take that $60,000 amount that was supposedly for the Knicks tickets, you add that to the 18,000 that Huberfell sent to Resnick's son school, and then you add the other 18,000 that he sent to a charity for Resnick, and then you add another 3,600 that he sent to another charity for Resnick, and you come up with $96,000. $96,000, so not $96,400, $96,600, $400 shy of the $100,000 that Huberfell was paying Resnick as commission half a percent of $20 million. Let that marinate. Okay? So, I'm gonna wrap it there because this has run quite long. Now, there was rebuttals and things of that nature. There was one question that the defense brought up. They said, we asked who, um, Resnick, what is the difference between the truth and a lie? And Resnick said, I don't understand the question. And they said that is the most honest thing that that guy said. They said that you should not convict anyone on the word of Jonah Resnick. You shouldn't convict someone for stealing a slice of bread, more or less from try for trying to um, scam correction officers out of $20 million. Okay, that's how they rested their case. Um, the defense came back and started poking holes in the defense's case. And um, I could get into that too, and they were convincing, you know what I mean? They brought up a lot of points, and if I had another half hour, I could get into that too, but the, the bottom line is that right now the jury has this case. The jury has the case, they're deliberating the case, and um, it could go either way. I just try to present the facts. I don't want to weigh in on whether or not He's innocent or guilty, but I hope I gave you guys a good picture of what's happening in the case, evidence that's involved. And um, just one second about the jury. The jury, like I said before, is very diverse. I, I said it's like the Rainbow Coalition up there. It's like the UN going on up there. And um, it's nice, it's good. It seems like, you know, it's sort of like if you, went to Manhattan or you was on a train during rush hour and you said, okay, everybody in this car, we're gonna pull you out and we're gonna 